This speech sample has nine massive, but very common intonation and stress mistakes that are ruining the speaker's clarity of meaning and their perception of confidence. See if you can spot them. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm just checking in to see if the report is complete. The client needs it submitted by noon today, so if there are any issues, please see me. I'll be teaching you about English stress and intonation because it's my goal to help as many ESL speakers to be able to spot these issues, to fix them, and improve their clarity and confidence as a result. I'm going to go into what those massive mistakes were, but first I want to delve a little deeper. So let me simplify things for you. The terms intonation, inflection, pitch changes, cadence, they all refer to the same thing. It's referring to how our pitch or how the music of our speech goes up and down and that there are certain rules to it. So if you think of all those terms just like singing, it kind of simplifies things. It's the music of English. Now stress is different because it's a part of intonation. Stress includes singing and therefore it's part of intonation, but it's more about which specific words or syllables are being sung. And rhythm refers to that general beat that results from using stress and the music or the intonation of English. A good analogy is like seeing intonation as the song, seeing rhythm as the beat or the drums, and seeing stress as those backup singers that really just sing the important words and make those particular words stand out. English is a stress-timed language. That just means that the stress affects the timing of the language. So instead of every single word and syllable being equal stress, some words have more stress than others. So what is stress specifically? When we place stress on a word, we're physically making that word higher pitched. So we're singing it higher. We're also making the vowel or the word in general longer. We're stretching it out. And we're also making that word slightly louder. For most of my clients, when I discuss stress, I focus on the singing element because that tends to stretch out and make that word or syllable louder anyway. So it's kind of a cheat. That takes care of all three. One thing about stress that most instructors don't really talk about is the fact that there is kind of like a slide, an up and down slide of singing. If a word is stressed or it's the most important word in a sentence, we tend to slide up and down on that word. If it's a one syllable word like great, you'll sing to a higher note and then a lower note within that one word. If the stressed word is a two syllable word like window, you'll hear that up and down pitch within each syllable. Window. So listen for that slide that occurs in the intonation in English. Slide. So a simple example of this would be in the sentence, you'll need a pen and a pencil. I'll exaggerate that, you'll need a pen and a pencil. In between those stressed words are what we call unstressed words. Unstressed words are produced very quickly. They are the opposite of stressed, so they are shorter, slightly quieter, and as a result of no singing, you'll hear kind of a flat intonation. You'll also notice that in the unstressed words, that's where you're going to see a lot of reductions and a lot of contractions, because really what we're trying to do is make them disappear a little, make them not as noticeable, so that the stressed words can really stand out and be the star. This helps give some clarity to your listener so they know what to think about and what to focus on when you're speaking so everything you say is much more understandable. In the unstressed words, that's where you're going to see a lot of schwa. And by schwa, I mean a very reduced vowel. Most of the vowels kind of reduce to a uh, uh sound, a really quick neutral sound. Let's look at our example again. You'll need a pen and a pencil. Notice how you will turns to you'll. A turns to uh, you'll need a. And a uh, turns to n, n, n and reduces to just the n sound, turns to a quick schwa, n, n, n. And so in the time of saying four words, you will need a, that will be produced just as quickly as pen. Takes about the same amount of time. Similarly, in a sentence like, 
I am going to go. When we stress the word go, we're going to do that up and down wave. Go, singing. I am contracts to I'm. Going to contracts to gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. And in the sentence, out of the blue, the word of reduces into a, uh, literally just schwa. <laughs> the turns to the, of the, of the, out of the, out of the, out of the blue. Blue is elongated, sung with a nice high and low wave, and it's a bit louder, out of the blue. So if you suspect you're having a problem with intonation or stress, or you feel like when you're done talking, someone will still look at you like you're still going to say something, but you're done speaking, chances are you're having an issue with intonation of English. So the problem you might be having is that if you apply the intonation rules of your native language to English, it can impact the meaning, emotion, intention, and even the authority and confidence that you're portraying to your listener. It's kind of a big deal. And I think for most of my clients, the biggest issue that they face is that it's eroding their impression of confident speaking and their impression of authority as well, especially if you're in a leadership role in your profession. So let's go back to that initial speech sample that I gave you with those massive but common intonation and stress mistakes. For the first statement, because it is a statement, we want to show a downward intonation at the end. It's a falling intonation. It just means that we're singing to a low pitch. Hi, John. Hi, John. On top of that, the word hi can have a really nice high and low wave. Hi, John. So the hi has a really high and low wave form. And at the very end at John, we're going in a downward falling intonation. And it also indicates confidence. When you provide your listener with a strong downward intonation, you're indicating to them that it is a true statement, that you're confident about that. And it comes from a stance of authority. How are you doing? How are you doing? The first example showed a very flat intonation. Rather than choosing one word to really stress on, how are you doing? Doing. When you include a higher pitch and more of that high-low waveform, you're indicating interest. A flat intonation generally indicates disinterest. You'll also notice in the first example, each word was stressed equally. Rather than condensing and de-stressing the unimportant words, and really emphasizing the most important word. I'm just checking in to see if the report is complete. I'm just checking in to see if the report is complete. In the word report, report, the stress was on the first syllable, re. In this case, it's a report, report. So the stress was on the wrong syllable there. The client needs it submitted by noon today, so if there are any issues, please see me. The client needs it submitted by noon today, so if there are any issues, please see me. The sample shows an upward intonation for all of the parts of this sentence. And since it's a statement, we really shouldn't have any real highs at all. It's not a list. There's really no reason to go upwards unless you're really uncertain about what you're saying. So when the speaker uses an upward intonation in between each and every phrase, it indicates they're not quite sure, they're not very confident about what they're saying, and doesn't come from a place of authority as a result. The client needs it submitted by noon today. So if there are any issues, any issues, Notice the downward intonation indicating confidence and authority. Please see me. Notice the downward intonation at the end. Again, indicating confidence and authority. And if any little bit of this information was even a tiny bit helpful, press the little thumbs up, like, mitten hand. Let me know that this is something that you found useful and valuable. And if you want more information like this, just subscribe but I'll just keep sharing with you. If you've ever analyzed your own speech or listened to yourself in a recording, pay attention to the intonation and stress of what you're saying. Do you tend to use an upward intonation in between everything you're saying? 
kind of like this, are using a downward intonation, showing confidence, and stressing words in a very clear way. And if you're struggling with understanding when to go up an intonation and use a rising intonation or a downward intonation, or when we break the rules and use an upward intonation when we shouldn't, and what does that mean? How does that change the meaning of what we're saying? Then check out this video. We're going to go into great detail and we'll get some amazing practice so that you can rock intonation too. I'll see you there. Bye.